Hey guys, thanks again for uh, tuning in to our web episode. Uh, this month we are going to be trying out a new format, Medical Jeopardy. So here in this uh, next video you're going to see some of our renal fellows at WashU uh, competing in a friendly way, hopefully, um, uh, to answer questions in a Jeopardy format just like the game show. So we're going to be following the same rules as the game show, which will be that you have to wait for the answer to be completely read out loud before buzzing in. Uh, you will be penalized for missed questions. Um, we will only be doing one Jeopardy. There won't be a single and a double Jeopardy. So we'll just go through a single Jeopardy and a final Jeopardy. And at the end of it, we'll tally the scores and see who wins. Uh, it's going to be a good time. And again, thank you to all of our subscribers and for all the people who have been viewing um, the videos of the renal pathology teaching series. I hope to be recording more of those uh, this month with Dr. Gott and more of our fellows. Uh, again, I want to thank our um, sponsors uh, with the Renal Fellow Network, AJKD Blog, Nephron Power. Uh, please also check out some other great nephrology resources, NephJC, which is the online nephrology journal club, uh, and also uh, Nephrology On Demand, uh, their Google site. I'll embed all of those links within these video. Uh, Nephrology on Demand has some great apps, uh, renal-related apps. So check them out, and please enjoy this episode. Hey, welcome to Medical Jeopardy um, at WashU. I'm going to introduce our contestants. First on Team 1, we have Usman and Pranjal. On Team 2, oh, they're trying to beckon more fellows to play if they want to. On Team 2, we have uh, Karthik and Sagar. I'm going to turn the volume down on my computer here. Is Reem going to play too? No, I'm just going to help. Reem's just going to help. You can't see her on the screen. Okay. So uh, he, I'm going to introduce the categories first. So the categories will be, can you see okay on the monitor? All right. Totally tubular, tubular disorders of the kidney. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Okay, all about urine. Critical kidneys, all about critical care and nephrology. Syndromes, now these are general medical, not nephrology, so I want you to stay sharp on your general medicine knowledge as well. Landmark trials in nephrology, I will be describing a clinical trial. You will tell me which trial I am des describing. And a uh, pop culture category, which is all about movies, given that it is Oscar season. So we'll start with team one. Which category would you like? It's totally tubular. 100. Totally tubular for 100. Again, wait for me to finish completely asking the question before you ring in. Oh, and I will ask one, Ben, maybe? Mm -hmm. Can you uh, be the arbiter of who is correct or who, which team is ringing correct? All right. So often used in the treatment of seizures, topiramate or topomax can lead to this renal tubular disorder. Proximal tubular dysfunction. Proximal RTA is correct. Yeah, so in the future, what is proximal RTA? That's all right. We'll give it to you. All right, so team one has the board. You're in trouble for 100. You're in trouble for 100. An elevation of urine sodium with a low urine chloride can be seen in this acid base disorder. We'll call time there. Yeah, Reem knows it. Metabolic alkalosis. Okay. Hit the buzzer. <laughs> close them, close them. No, that's okay. So no points there. Uh, you still have control of the board. Uh, totally tubular for 200. Totally tubular for 200. The syndrome of apparent mineral corticoid excess can be acquired as a result of eating black licorice, which contains this compound. Team two. Glycerin. Um, glycolic acid. That is incorrect. Glycerinic acid. I can spell it G L Y C E R R H E N I C. Um, okay, we'll give it to you. It's actually glycerinic acid, but it's very close. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll give it to you. It's not glycerin. <laughs> glycerinic acid. <laughs> Bottom back. Okay, that's close enough. Close enough. Do you, do you know which enzyme this in, in, inhibits? 11-beta-HSD2. 11-beta-hydroxy, uh, yes, steroid dehydrogenase. Excellent. So 200 points to team two, and you have control of the board. Totally 
tubular 300. Totally tubular, 300. The mystery of Balkan endemic nephropathy, which led to chronic interstitial nephritis, has recently been linked to exposure to this compound. No one knows? All right, we will call it. Any attending? No. Aristolochic acid. 300 points for Dr. Del May. <laughs> Also, the cause of Chinese herb nephropathy. Okay, so um, still have control team two. Critical kidneys for 100. Critical kidneys for 100. The ATN trial established this dose of dialysis as the less intensive treatment strategy for CVVH. Oh, team one. Yeah. Yes. It's 20 mils per kilogram per hour. That is correct. What is, what is 20 <laughs> milligrams per kilogram per hour? And the high dose was 35. Okay, so 100 points to team one. So critical care again for 200. I'm sorry, critical care? Critical, uh, okay, that's fine. 200. This is the syndrome of hemorrhagic hepatitis and kidney injury related to fulminant leptospirosis. Wheel syndrome. Wheel syndrome is correct. What is wheel syndrome? Very nice. That was good. All right, so uh, Sagar. We'll do critical kidneys for 300. Critical kidneys for 300. The guidelines for the diagnosis and management of hepatorenal syndrome are created by this exclusive club. Frangel. Is it ascites? A uh, little more specific, please. Ascites World Club. Oh. <laughs> All right, so w w we won't give it. It's the International, international Ascites, Ascites Club. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Prangel is not a member <laughs> of this club. All right, so you have control still. Totally two. We're very lenient here. Okay, Gordon syndrome, also known as pseudo-hypoaldosteronism type 2, will respond well to this class of drugs. Um, this will be thiazide diuretics. That is correct. Very nice. Thiazide diuretics. So that's a 400 points for team 2. And you have control of the board. Sagar. Go for syndromes 100. Syndromes 100. Remember, these um, sometimes are general medical, so not always nephrology. Saturnine gout, which describes a syndrome of hyperuricemia, gout, renal failure, and anemia as a result of exposure to this element. It's in the news also. In Michigan. In Michigan. I don't know how I'm playing this. Go for it, lead. Lead. Lead is correct. <laughs> what is lead? What is lead? What is lead? Okay, Fahad, <laughs> hop in here, please. We're going to introduce Fahad to uh, to Team official. One. Shoot. Please come in. <laughs> All right. Um, so, team two. Syndromes for 200. Syndromes for 200. Meg syndrome leads to this clinical triad of findings. All right, Fahad knows it. That's correct. Ovarian mass, ascites, and pleural effusion. <laughs> Raj will decide who he plays for near the end based on who's winning. I'm just kidding. All right, so. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, okay, so uh, let's go for a critical kidneys for 400. Critical kidneys for 400. Metabolic acidosis after acute acetaminophen <laughs> overdose <laughs> can be a result of accumulation of this organic acid. That's a jump, right? 
yeah, they jump, so you guys get the question. <laughs> it's oxoprolene. What yes. is oxoprolene? Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. Also called pyroglutamic acid. Okay. Um, team one. So let's finish. So uh, we'll finish off the critical kidneys with 500. Okay. Hypertonic or 3% saline has this amount of sodium molecules in milliequivalents per liter. I need an answer. I need an answer. It's, it's, it's 514. Oh, what was your answer? That's incorrect. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but if you know it, you can. All right, I'm going to give you time. It's actually 513. Well, that's a mill equivalent off. Math doesn't lie, so there's no. Yeah. So we'll have 500 negative. Yes. Yes. So one million plants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So team one, um, you still have the board despite missing that question. No one wants to do movies. I mean, <laughs> let's do movies for two hundred. All right, movies are two hundred. All right. Uh, more well known for his music, David Bowie also dabbled in film. In 1986, he played Jareth the Goblin King in this movie. That's old movies. It is. New movies. Well, David Bowie. He's just in the years old at that point. <laughs> I'm sure someone knows this in the audience. It is Labyrinth. It's really the only movie he was in, pretty much. You're going to have to do them eventually, but you can choose whatever you want right now. So who does it? The landmark trials. Uh, landmark for 100. Landmark okay. trials. This 2010 trial showed that rituximab was non-inferior to cyclophosphamide for the treatment of ANCA-associated vasculitis. Sagar. This was the RAVE trial. That is correct. I didn't see this. Is that the same thing? Sagar's team has the board. We'll do syndromes for 300. This is the triad of symptoms seen in normal pressure hydrocephalus. Sagar. I need an answer. You can't. You can't discuss it. <laughs> Tell me the answer, please. We can answer. Okay, you're gonna. You're. you're, you're oh, you're, 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 you're the triad. You need the triad. We can answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. So. Urinary incontinence. Urinary incontinence, abnormal gait, and uh, what is it called? The, the alter ventral septum. Dementia. Okay, that's correct. I was in, trying to figure out. Oh, no, in the future, mean, yeah. D don't discuss after ringing in. Okay. Uh, Wildo syndromes for 400. <laughs> Patients who have cortical blindness yet deny their symptoms are said to have this syndrome. Oh, Usman's like all about buzzing in, but not. All right, time's up. But what were you going to answer? No, it's incorrect. I don't remember. Okay, so it's Anton's <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> Just the A is not good enough for you. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll do syndromes for 500. All right, this one's tough. This rare genetic disease leads to arthritis, fevers, sensory neural hearing loss, and sometimes AA amyloid deposition within the kidney. So I'm going to call time. Any thoughts, though? From the audience? No. Dr. Coyne is negative, no. Yeah, so this is something called Muckle-Well syndrome. Ooh, OK. All right. Uh, we'll do landmark trials for 200. Landmark trials for 200. Back to nephrology. Okay. 
This 2004 trial compared albumin to saline for fluid resuscitation in the ICU setting showed no real difference in mortality. Ting Ting got it. <coughs> Safe trial. Yeah, you still have control of the board. Sure, you're in trouble. Okay. Magnesium ammonium phosphate stones, which are linked to urease splitting bacterial infections, lead to this ominous sounding finding on urine microscopy. Um, Are we talking about pH, crystals? Or so, <laughs> it's, a, it, it, it's a urine crystal that you'd see. Coffin lid. Coffin lid. Coffin lid. Coffin lid crystals is correct. All right. There is some controversy there. Yeah, tombstone, no. Tombstone is what you see in the ST elevation <laughs> MI. <laughs> <laughs> this is not cardiology. <laughs> All right, team one, you got that one correct. You're in trouble for 300. You're in trouble for 300. The finding of green urine color is associated with a recent injection or ingestion of this compound. Team two. Methylene blue. Methylene, what is methylene blue? What is methylene? Is correct. It's not St. Patrick's Day beer. <laughs> <laughs> no. That just leads to cir cirrhosis. Um, totally tubular. For totally tubular. Five hundred. This can make a big difference. Eating rhubarb leaves can lead to tubular toxicity and stone formation due to excessive ingestion of this compound. Sagar. Oxalate. What is oxalate? Is cor correct. Sorry, I did not. Uh, show that answer and it's correct. So what is oxalate? <coughs> there is a daily double in here somewhere. We'll pick you're in trouble for 400. <laughs> this type of kidney stone does not form in an alkaline environment and can even dissolve when the urine pH is raised above 6.5. Uh, uric acid stones are correct. <laughs> so that was a uh, 400 point. Still pretty close. Anyone's game. Hyaline casts are composed of TAM horsefall protein, which are also known by this chemical name. I'll give you a hint. It also leads, to, if you have a mutation in this gene, it leads to like a medullary cystic kidney disease. <laughs> All right. It's time. Euromodulin. So yeah, a, a U mod gene mutation leads to gout in right. renal failure. Yeah. That was a 500 point question. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Supposed to be the 25 that we've heard so far. 400. <laughs> you can make the next one then. Okay. Um, <laughs> team one, I believe. Movie. Okay, movie. <laughs> All right. One of Alan Rickman's first major Hollywood roles was as this villain who took over Nakatomi Plaza in the movie Die Hard. I'm No one has watched Die Hard? Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. No, I would not have accepted Hans. So we... Yeah. So the next noon conference will just be about movies. We won't, uh, we won't teach nephrology. We need to just watch more movies with you guys. Yeah. Next time I'll have something different. You need more recent movies. Well, there's some. There's some. Okay.
All right, you guys. So movie time for you. Let's finish the movie. So nobody's answering. Leonardo DiCaprio, nominated for Best Actor in The Revenant, has never won an Academy Award, but was first nominated for one for playing a mentally challenged boy in this 1993 film. What were you? Okay, time's up. What, what, what were you thinking? Were you gonna say like Titanic or something? Okay. Right. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah. Okay. Movie time is too hard for you guys. I'm sorry. I'll. I'll. All right. But. Okay. Movie time. Okay. Movie time. Oh, yeah. Let's finish it. This heist film, released in 1992, was controversial director Quentin Tarantino's first script, screenplay, and movie. In this movie, a guy gets his ear cut off. We were 10 years old. This is a great movie. It's one of my favorite. I'll answer the points if you want. What, what do you think? Off? No, very close. No, before Pulp Fiction. It's Re Reservoir Dogs. Negative? Someone in the audience knew that, right? Okay. Yeah, Jeff. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's finish movie time. The guy who was a cop had to be a good offer. Lily James, lead actress in the Cinderella remake, is also well known as playing Lady Rose McClare in this television series. What is Downton Abbey? We don't know. Don't know what you watch at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We got uh, three more questions before final Jeopardy. Still, I guess three hundred. Okay. Landmark trials. This 1998 foundation study is the largest randomized trial of erythropoietin stimulating agents in hemodialysis patients. Dr. Coyne is in the room. Dr. Coyne explained it to us, but he didn't tell me what's the name of the trial. You should know the name of this trial. This was the normal hematocrit trial. Okay. That's okay, you guys are still in the game. All right, landmark trials, 400 or 500? One of these is a daily double. Ooh, not this one. This 2003 Lancet trial showing that combination ACE inhibitor and ARB therapy was beneficial in non-diabetic renal disease was retracted in 2009 when the data was found to be falsified. We have definitely talked about this because George Gerard gave this whole grand rounds about it. It was a Japanese guy who like made up all this data. Okay, it was the cooperate trial. All right, so team one gets this daily double. All right, so the score right now, Seth, is 1,200 for team one, 2,000 for team two. So you can bet up to $1,200. The, the category is trials, though. Oh, we can bet $1. Yeah, you can bet nothing if you, if you don't feel confident. Yes, you'll lose the money if you don't get it. There is a final Jeopardy coming up. It's a tough one. It's a it's a tough one. One dollar. Okay. I like the is confidence. Full, another board or no, this is it. This is it. Uh, this is the end, unfortunately. Final I thought the the end. Yeah. Okay, so this is the only only you can answer it. Oh, you guys cannot. Alright, this 2008 New England Journal trial demonstrated that combination therapy of telmisartan and ramipril was associated with a higher incidence of hyperkalemia than either drug alone.
No idea. I don't know the name. Don't remember the name. Remember the don't know the name. The one that called the cooperate into question. This is the one that the same authors. Um, I don't remember exactly if it was the case. Okay, so you lose your one dollar. So they're down to uh, eleven ninety nine. So attendings. This was the on target. Okay, so um, at the end of Jeopardy, before we do the final question, we are at 11.99 for Team 1 and Team 2 as 2,000. So, do the math. You have notepad and pen in front of you. Your category for Final Jeopardy is electron microscopy. Um, so you, based on this category, make a wager for how much you want to bet and write it down on the piece of paper, please. I'm thinking it should be 401. Okay. I do. No, no, whatever you're going to wager, you're going to get that. So we'll be 2400. They will be. We know you're what you're bidding. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's all good. It's mine. All right, so have you put written down your wager? Yeah. Team one's wager. Yeah. Okay. You write it. Okay. And uh, Team Two's wager is being passed to Seth as we speak. Okay, so um, you will answer these individually on paper. Okay? So there's no buzzing. So the question is the X linked recessive disorder, Fabre's disease, is associated with this pathognomic finding within the lysosome when renal tissue is viewed by electron microscopy. <laughs> back to childhood. Okay, so okay, we'll begin with team one. First, um, tell us your answer. Zebra bodies. Zebra bodies is correct, and their wager. Eleven ninety nine. So they double their winnings. Very nice. <laughs> so, team two. Zebra bodies are concentric lamellar bodies. Oh. <laughs> Got all fancy on us. And your wager was? 401. Okay. Okay, and so that brings us to a final score of 2,401 for Team 2. And 2,398 for Team 1. <laughs> that would have been more painful. That's uh, very close. So thank you. All for playing. All right, guys. So that wraps it up for our first episode of Medical Jeopardy. Um, I hope you enjoyed the new format. We'll be back to our renal pathology teaching series next uh, with Dr. Gott, and we will be presenting some more cases, some more complicated cases. So apologize for the uh, somewhat technical difficulties in the Medical Jeopardy. Still getting used to switching the cameras. Um, there was a little bit of time where I was uh, focusing in on one team too much and uh, the audio I know wasn't great because it was difficult to hear the fellows. Uh, I'll work on that and uh, hopefully I get some better equipment soon so I can make uh, the whole process easier to record. If you do have uh, suggestions or if you would like to recommend questions or categories for the next episode of Medical Jeopardy, which will probably be in a few months, please feel free to shoot me a tweet at Maximal Change up above here, here, um, or you can send me a message there on Twitter. You can also email me directly at my WashU account, T-Y-A-U, at dom.wustl.edu, and maybe some of your questions or categories can be featured on the next web episode. So tune in, and we'll be back. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>